The Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle is an external video capture card that is designed to work with broadcast compliant aspect ratios, frame rates, and resolutions. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play back non-compliant aspect ratios, frame rates, and resolutions using Adobe Premiere Pro. We can take a 4K video as well and output it to the broadcast compliant monitor. It's playing back really silky smooth. My drone video clips play back just fine as well. These are 60 frames per second. So it's nice that we can output 4K and even higher resolution. The way you can do that with Premiere Pro is by going into the file menu or the menu bar, go to edit, go to preference, and then you're gonna scroll down to playback. When you get to playback, you wanna make sure you got the Blackmagic design enabled. Also the Mercury Transmit enabled. When we go to setup, where it says for output of unsupported frame sizes, there's no output, scale down or scale up. I select scale down for the 4K and the other you know, drone video footage I've got. And Premiere Pro along with the Intensity Shuttle can make use of these video clips really easy. This video clip has the ultra wide cinematic aspect ratio of 21 by nine as opposed to 16 by nine. The intensity shuttle will not output it to a 16 by nine monitor correctly. It will not make use of a letterbox. We can use Premiere Pro's adjustment layer along with a crop filter to make it have the correct aspect ratio. If I click on the properties for this clip, we can tell it's 4,480 by 1,920. It's definitely the ultra wide aspect ratio as opposed to 16 by nine. We can create a timeline or sequence that is 4,480 by 2,520. That'll give us a 16 by nine aspect ratio. But with the adjustment layer applied, we'll be able to check out our composition easy enough. We can play things back in real time. I'm going to go to export this using Adobe's media encoder. We're gonna stick with QuickTime. I'm going to opt for the GoPro Synform. And here's where things will get interesting. We want to deselect this. Here's the aspect ratio. I want to deselect this as well. I don't want it to maintain the aspect ratio. I want to type in 1920 or 1916. I typed in 1916. Now we see the wide cinematic aspect ratio that we want. Some people are gonna say the composition doesn't look correct because there's pillar boxes on the left and right. And that is true. If we go scale to fit though, this is the exact image we want. We can enable this now. And if somebody says 4,000 by 480 is too large for my website, bring it down to 2,000, we'll go 2,400. It's that simple folks, once you get the aspect ratio locked. I'm sure some of you are thinking that when working with odd aspect ratios, you don't need to apply the adjustment layer with the crop filter. That is true, you could just do everything right at export, but if you are trying to do like a flash banner ad with a really odd aspect ratio and motion graphics, it would probably be best to use the adjustment layer and on export, make sure you have the aspect ratio correct. I can output this 4K timeline to the CRT monitor. We have to go into the intensity shuttle control panel where it says conversion, I have to opt to do HD to SD and use the letter box if I want the aspect ratio to be correct. I'll hit save. I then have to go to the sequence settings. This is 60 frames per second. We have to enable upper fields. We also have to enable 29.97 frames per second. You're noticing on the HD monitor that the aspect ratio isn't correct. We have to use the zoom feature to get the correct aspect ratio. In order to output to the standard definition monitor though, the HDMI port and the S-Video port both have to output 720 by 480. You can't have the HDMI put out at high definition and the S-Video put out at 720 by 480. If I select a 1920 by 1080 timeline though, I wanna let people know the motion graphics on this will play back really smooth on the CRT monitor. The motion graphics are better looking on the CRT monitor as far as motion's concerned than on the high definition monitor. 
we can opt to do something with the zoom feature too. This has the right aspect ratio and it looks a little bit more crisp and clean because it's not using the full screen of the high definition monitor. If you have the overscan enabled on your broadcast monitor, the pixels that are hidden by the bezel will be used. If you have overscan off, the pixels that are hidden by the bezel will not be used. If you notice on this video clip, when I switch overscan off, more of the Windows taskbar is shown. It looks exactly like a computer monitor. This makes it ideal to do computer training tutorials that are recorded with screen capture software. I'm going to go to the Windows Start menu and scroll down to the Blackmagic Design folder. I'm going to select the desktop video setup. Here we see the option to remove field jitter on pause. This is useful to have if you have an interlaced sequence. If somebody is waving their hand in the video and it's interlaced, if you pause the sequence, their hand will jitter back and forth on the CRT monitor. On the high definition LCD monitor, their hand will have lines going through them. It's known as a combing effect. Both of them are hideous to look at. The reason that happens is because it's trying to show the odd and even field both to make up the frame. But with remove field jitter on pause selected, it will only show the one field instead of trying to show both fields. I should mention that the remove jitter option only affects video clips that have motion in them. Somebody waving their hand, somebody running, somebody swinging a baseball bat. A lot of video clips, you wouldn't even notice the difference whether it was on or off. If you're trying to output 4K to the CRT monitor, the standard definition monitor, it might be in your best interest to select half or quarter resolution for playback and for paused resolution, it might be best to select half or quarter resolution. You'll have to play around with the settings. High quality playback can make a difference and clean up the image, whether it was standard definition or high definition. The only thing is you're gonna lose some real time performance with this enabled, but sometimes it is your best option. For some of you, you may wanna go to project settings, select general, and right here you have the option to use the Mercury playback engine with GPU acceleration or software only. For some of you, software only might be your best bet. I just want to say that installing the ASIO for all drivers gave Premiere Pro a lot better real-time playback than if I didn't have it installed. Obviously, your settings would have to be totally different than what mine are when using the ASIO for all driver, but I wanted to make mention of that. As you can tell, I'm outputting my drone footage to the CRT monitor. The resolution is 2704 by 1520. You have to make sure you have an interlaced timeline at 29.97 frames per second, and you need to opt for the HD to SD conversion within the intensity shuttle control panel. To output 4K or 2.5K to a standard HD monitor, you simply have to make sure you have scale down selected. It's good to have the scale down selected because that way you don't have to have the sequences in Premiere Pro match the intensity shuttle control panels video output 100%. It'll output just about anything. I want to wrap up this video by stating the intensity shuttle can play sequences that are standard definition just fine. 720 by 480i. It can play high definition 1440 by 1080i. It can play 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. Or if you want to go with an interlaced sequence at 1920 by 1080, that will work. The only exception is if you have a 4K timeline or even a 1920 by 1080 timeline at 60 frames per second, it will not play at 1920 by 1080 resolution the image will be rasterized down to 1280 by 720. The reason being is you don't usually broadcast at 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. You can broadcast at 1280 by 720 at 60 frames per second. I would rather rasterize down the image and maintain the full 60 frames per second because the motion graphics will look a lot better than playing at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second.